Welcome to Thoughts on Thursday. It's Reverend Miller and Stuart Holmes. We are in the season of Lent. We had our first Sunday of Lent. We're now approaching our second Sunday of Lent. We had Ash Wednesday service. And <clears throat> one of the beautiful things about being a community church is that we have people from different Christian backgrounds. Not everyone grew up being Reformed. We even have a few Anglicans, you know, I mean, <laughs> we even let them in, Stuart. So, Holy moly. <laughs> so when you come to Lent, you have some different practices. And we also have people like myself who didn't actually grow up going to church. And so I get different questions about Lent and, and all, all its meaning and all the counting, all these different details about Lent. And so I thought I'd take a moment just to talk a little bit about Lent and the Lenten practice. Lent is actually the um, oldest season in the Christian calendar. It was the first one. I believe about 5th century, they, they believe they see writings about Lent. Advent was the second one, and it was kind of a, a, a Lent light. So Lent was this idea of asking for forgiveness and seeing our mortality and it's for 40 days to mirror Jesus being in the desert being tempted for 40 days so that's the original part of it coming from what we know as the Catholic and also Orthodox tradition now in the Orthodox tradition they don't start with Ash Wednesday they start with a Monday and for their 40 days, they include the Sundays. In the Western tradition, we take the Sundays out as a reminder that every Sunday is a Resurrection Sunday. Therefore, every Sunday is really an Easter Sunday celebrating the resurrection of, of Jesus from the grave, overcoming death with life. Right? So, we're in the Eastern world. They start Monday. They include... The Sundays. So that's a little bit of a difference. Something you probably talk about all the time. You need to know <laughs> this information, right, Stuart? You don't want to make a fool of yourself and not realize that Eastern Orthodox do something different. And there's also even Eastern Lutherans who follow that calendar that the Orthodox do. So that's one difference of that. In some of the non-denominational churches, they don't really yeah. observe Lent in the same way. So, now, for us in the Reformed Church, we often start on Ash Wednesday with this call. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and our need for the love and forgiveness shown to us in Jesus Christ. I invite you, therefore, in the name of Christ, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and by penitence, by prayer and fasting, by practicing works of love, and by reading and reflecting on God's Word. And so that really shows um, what, for us in the Reformed Church, what Lent is all about. And it is, many people practice some type of fasting to remind themselves of Jesus' fasting, but also the sacrifice, giving something up. And we often do a special devotional for Lent. That's the that idea of reflecting on God's word. And then there can be also acts of service we throw in there. And so that kind of gives you a perspective of Lent. Now, in the Catholic Church, they're going to follow some dietary restrictions and vegetarian days, including Fridays and also Ash Wednesday would be that. We're not quite doing that. That's where the famous Friday fish fry comes from and many fundraisers for churches and Catholic churches do that idea to eat fish on Friday. And who doesn't like something fried and yummy? So that's, it gives you a little bit about that. An interesting part is that many evangelical Protestant denominations in the United States, they celebrate a sunrise service right, on Easter Sunday. That originally came from the Moravian Church in the 18th century. And originally, it was done in a cemetery or a graveyard, not huh. just a park, to remind ourselves that up from the grave, Jesus came. And so, you don't really see that as a 
a world practice that's more of a coming from England and then to the United States more of a United States practice in the world what you would see is the idea of an Easter vigil which would happen the Saturday prior to Easter and so Lent for us 40 days Ash Wednesday not Sundays and it ends on that Saturday and then going to the tradition the Hebrew tradition that the day um, starts or ends at dusk and so Easter vigil would be the idea that it's Easter it is that day not Saturday but Sunday and so at dusk you'd have a fire out there and then you would come in and you'd have your Easter vigil that's what you see in more of the world practice of huh. Easter right. where many people grew up in the United States having the sunrise service probably not in a cemetery though not in a cemetery and probably very few would have the did have I think it's becoming more popular to do that Saturday service. The Saturday service <clears throat> so that's you know just a little bit of background to help you and really Anything you do spiritually as a spiritual practice is to, to help you draw closer to God and also experience life. And one last question. Some people have asked me, what's the significance of the number 40? Is there something beyond just the 40 days or 40 years? And there's not some symbolic thing about the number 40, but we do see in the Bible that with the 40 days and nights of the flood we see the 40 years in the desert we see Jesus fasting for 40 days we saw Moses fasting for 40 days uh, Jonah gave Nineveh 40 days to repent so you see that number over and over and it's often associated with uh, a testing or a trial of faith and for Jonah and Nineveh it was to repent so by practice, you continue to see the number 40 as 40 days or 40 years, with a, which becomes a symbol of being tested and refined in our faith. Wow. I could keep talking. I'm trying to see if I can go longer than Stuart today. Oh, it's going to be a challenge. Oh. Because I've got a lot. Okay, I, was, I thought I brought everything in, <laughs> including the kitchen sink. But okay, Stuart, what do you have for us today? Well, I... Uh, this Sunday, we're focusing, I'm focusing on uh, the hymn, uh, Out of the Depths, I Cry to You. Uh, it comes in various forms, um, I Cry to You, O Lord, uh, and uh, other titles. But basically, that tune is what I played at the beginning of our little mm. talk. Um, I'm going to be playing uh, one variation of it, and I'm going to be um, having the choir sing um, the, an anthem, got to bring it out, Oh Lord, from the depths I cry, yet another uh, variation on that tune. Uh, I wanted to play uh, two snippets. Number one is, not, is a piece by Jean Langlais, who was the organist at Saint Clotilde in Paris, and um, as is very common in a lot of, uh, in every parish church, I think, um, very tall ceilings, very uh, reverberant settings. So um, this piece doesn't come off as well uh, in, in a setting like ours with, with a drier acoustic. But catch what he's doing here. Um, the, the pedal is going to be outlining Depths uh, was that uh, that beginning melody. Mm. Listen to what he does with this to kind of bring out the depths on uh, how tense that is. <laughs> Oops. Tense. Melody. 
that that kind of grinding mm. feeling, and I love the piece, but it it, it just um, it takes a lot of patience for the um, average listener uh, to uh, to weed through that and get the gist of the depths. The uh, prelude this morning is going to, or Sunday morning, is going to run from um, the sublime to the ridiculous. Starts out with that melody again. that first uh, phrase of the melody, very much like Pachelbel's canon in D. Um, and he builds up, uh, every time I turn around, uh, he's doing something, uh, he's adding a little bit more organ uh, sound to it. Uh. And then finally ending up with a pretty uh, loud, uh, declaration. Uh, and so he gets that running down and he comes to an end. departure for um, preludes. Uh, they don't usually end up on that strong, but hopefully the words of that text, which is hymn 240, I believe, in our hymnal, um, help uh, the congregation, if they so choose, to um, kind of get themselves into this. Mm. All right. I love any worship explanation that starts... It starts with the sublime and moves to the ridiculous. <laughs> you know it's going to be a good... I, mean, I was uh, like, wow, that's, a, that's an explanation that makes you want to come to church. And the uh, idea that God can lift us out of the depths, there's something ridiculous about that, right? Yeah. We, we feel so overwhelmed, and we're going to see that. So thanks, Stuart, for the explanation. If you have any other questions about Lent, Send me a text or email or see me on Sunday and then we'll maybe answer some more. So these are our thoughts. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you on Sunday, either through Facebook, YouTube, or here in person. We are still mass mandatory for worship and the consistory will be discussing that on Monday at our consistory meeting. Have a great day.